Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. In this video, we're gonna watch some Space Marine 2 operations gameplay on substantial difficulty, which is the second highest difficulty. I thought this would make a good background, especially if you guys have watched the first couple of Space Marine videos that I posted, which are on the campaign, which were like the first time I was playing the game. You'll see the difference between when you're new to Space Marine and when you've been playing for quite a while and really getting the gameplay down, but I wanted to use this as a background to talk to you about Space Marine 2 and why it's an absolutely incredible game that if you have any interest in it at all, you should absolutely get it. I'm going to tell you tell you why in, in this video, so buckle in, prepare for some, for some wheezy jib-jab. So, to start, let's kind of cover the campaign and the PvP briefly. Uh, the campaign I thought was great, right? It's not too short, not too long. Uh, it was a good pace to go through. It taught you the game. It gives you a lot of the basics. Great set pieces. A decent story with characters that aren't just throwaway bullshit. Like, it actually makes you feel like you're in us. Warhammer 40k Space Marine story very much like the original Space Marine did whatever 13 years ago um, it also has campaign co-op which is great from day one like games like Halo used to have uh, so I played the first mission by myself and actually you have to do that because it basically is the tutorial and it doesn't unlock online play until you get to basically the second mission um, and that's when I started playing it with my son, Bucky. Uh, his name's Seb, but his gamertag is Evil Bucky. And we played the rest of the campaign co-op, which was so much fun. Because the campaign on its own was great. But just something about co-op in this game, having someone there beside you killing that's not just a bot is, is really great. Um, looking back at it now, I'm actually excited to go back and replay the campaign on the highest difficulty based on everything I've learned from playing a crap ton of operations. I rewatched some of my gameplay or my, my campaign video as I'm going through and uploading them. And uh, yeah, it's just, <laughs> I, I'm embarrassed watching myself play those first few games considering where I'm at now. Um, in this gameplay, you'll see uh, me significantly further along. Uh, I'm actually even improved since then. Um, I'm working on uh, tackling my first ruthless mission uh, to success, I guess. I've done a, tried a couple, but I haven't put a whole lot of time into it yet. I've been really enjoying, honestly, the average difficulty uh, for just grinding most of my classes up into a decent level. So now I have every class up above 10. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's operations stuff. But that's really kind of what there is to say about campaign, right? Campaign is great. Definitely worth it. Um... It would probably almost be worth the price of admission on its own. I don't know if I would pay $70 just for the campaign, but if I did, I wouldn't be disappointed, really. But there's so much more here that makes it absolutely worth what whatever they're asking for it. Um, PvP. I haven't even tried it yet. I've heard nothing really but good things about it. There might be some class balance issues. There's only, you know, I think four maps or something like that. But everyone that I've seen that's played it has said that it's fun. I'm looking forward to jumping into it at some point. But I have been absolutely obsessed with playing Operations and ranking up my classes. Um, I haven't gotten to it yet. I will most likely do a live commentary the first time uh, I jump into that. So hopefully look forward to that coming soon. But uh, yeah, I have to, I have to <laughs> stop playing Operations for a few minutes. Uh, in order to do that, so... Um, yeah, so let's get into what I consider the real meat of Space Marine 2, which is the operations. Currently, there are six operations, um, and honestly, it is plenty of variety in those six operations to keep you entertained for hours and hours. Literally, I have uh, been jumping around these campaign missions, uh, or these uh, operations, and I haven't felt like, oh, I'm really sick of it. Um, the very first mission, which is Inferno, uh, the first operation, even though it's not unlocked until you beat the first part of the campaign, you unlock Operation 6 out of the gate. Um, 
but Operation 1, Inferno, seems to be the one that I jump get dropped in the most. Um, it's also one of the easiest, so it could be that some players are trying to grind that out. You can select which operation you want to play and just jump in exactly the one you want. But if I just select Quick Match, it seems that Inferno comes up uh, slightly more than the others. Um, but still, I've played all of them many times, and, and they're just really great. Um, so let's talk about some of the aspects of the components around operations, right? So classes. There are currently six classes in the game. Uh, that's right, right? There's assault, or I'm sorry, there's tactical, assault, uh, vanguard, uh, bulwark, heavy, and why did I miss the other one? Um, sniper, duh, uh, sniper. Uh, <laughs> Which, uh, I love, I like all the classes, uh, they're all fun to play with, they give you different play styles, they all have perks to unlock, like a full tree of perks that you can choose from, they go through max level for each class, which is like 25. My highest class right now, I believe is, uh, well I know it's Assault, but I think Assault I've got at either 19 or 20 currently. Um, the other ones are all at least at level 11, I think I've got Tactical at like 13 or something like that. So I've played a good amount with each one, um, and they're just a lot of fun. As you can see here on, uh, this starts on normal difficulty, but this is on substantial difficulty. Sometimes, not every time in an operation, you will get one of these sub-bosses, um, and they will, they're, you know, basically a more difficult version of kind of one of the, um, they're called, it's an extremist enemy, but kind of a more difficult version of a normal extremist enemy you might run into during game. So you'll run into neuro Neurothropes uh, during normal operations on the Tyranid missions. But this is like a sub-boss Neurothrope that's extra hard. Um, and because of that, if you, when you kill it, you get an extra armory data. So if you recover the armory data in that's in each operation, as well as if it spawns a sub-boss, uh, and you kill the sub-boss, then you will get two armory data for that. Um, here you'll see a Gene Seed, which is an XP boost uh, that you can find. There's one in every mission. And the Gene Seed is interesting because you can't, if you carry it, you can't carry a Gene Seed. You can't carry a Guardian Relic, which would pick you up if you get downed. If you get downed with the Gene Seed, it gets destroyed. But if you get all the way to the end of the mission with it, then you get a decent XP boost uh, at the end of the mission. So it's a nice... It's a nice extra bonus. Those The armory data helps you with your weapon unlocks. Um, they're required for your weapon unlocks, right? So to unlock the rarer quality weapons, you need to get the uh, higher quality armory data. So the first two levels of difficulty, easy or minimal and normal, give you the basic, the common level armory data. Substantial difficulty gives you the purple um, armory data, and then the ruthless difficulty gives you the yellow elite level uh, armory uh, data, which is what I need to unlock some of my epic level weapons. I've ranked up like my chainsword enough and like the bolt pistol to the point where there's a couple of weapons that are ready for me to unlock the elite level, uh, but I haven't completed any. Uh, ruthless difficulty missions to get that high level armory data yet. So, so again, there's just something more for you to work towards, more for you to build out your skill, and and it's just, um, it's really great. You can, you know, going back to classes, if you want, you can kind of main one or two classes and really just grind those hard until you get max level. Um, or you can do kind of what I've done, which is I basically mained assault for the most part. It's sort of my go to because I'm a blood angel. Um, but, uh, not that your chapter matters in the gameplay, but from a philosophical perspective, we Blood Angels like to get in close. Um, but if you're like me, you kind of spread it around. It gives you a lot of variety to gameplay, right? You're not playing... In addition to there being the six operations, depending on which class you play, those operations play very differently. The way that you will play with Assault, jumping into groups of enemies really melee heavy, is very different than how you will play Sniper trying to sit back from longer range and headshot the Majoris level in enemies um, versus the Bulwark, who is honestly my least favorite, although I, from what I've seen, when you rank up to sort of max level for that, the perks that it gets are really cool. Like, I think there's a perk that makes the 
rally banner for Vanguard actually replenish health, which which would be really powerful. But for my playstyle, um, it's probably my least favorite of the six, but I still enjoy it. And yeah, there's just so much variety that you get from that. The heavy, using heavy weapons. Um, the tactical is the more all-arounder. It has access to the most different types of weapons. Um, and the off-spec scan. So it's just kind of a good general purpose one. But yeah, you'll find a class that you really love. Uh, I think Buck's favorite is either Vanguard or Heavy. I think he's mostly been doing Heavy. Um, and then split pretty closely with Vanguard. The uh, Vanguard kind of having the tether ability where you can basically grapple yourself to enemies to get in close for melee and yeah it's just it's just a lot of really good variety to those and they have different weapons that are available so there's lots of weapons in the game to rank up and unlock but they're also linked to different classes so for instance you can't choose any weapon with any class right the assault class for instance doesn't get a primary weapon it only gets a pistol um, and it only the bolt pistol or the heavy bolt pistol. I can't use the plasma pistol. And then a melee weapon like a chain sword. You'll see me here using the thunder hammer um, or I guess power hammer, whatever it's called. Um, or the power fist. Um, and, and really just kind of helps drive that play style and unlock those. Some of them are across classes, right? So the power fist is also used by the bulwark. Um, tactical and vanguard uh yeah tactical and i think vanguard can also use the chain sword the sniper uses just the combat knife um so yeah the way that it's kind of balanced that way gives you a lot of variety a lot of different things to try out um different play styles that you kind of have to try and different ways to tackle each operation right so how you will approach things uh just even adds even more variety so um super cool and yeah, I. That's that's probably enough talking about the weapons. But um, in addition to that, the the armor uh, cosmetics, right? I feel like the progression for that is perfect. It feels like, and I think this is literally the case. Every time you successfully complete a mission, which is um, unless you're really playing above a level that you're really capable of, it's going to be you know almost every mission you are unlocking something pretty much every time you complete a mission because you're unlocking XP, you're unlocking um, the currency that you use to like buy different weapons and buy cosmetics, like different colors for your armor. Um, but you're also unlocking different styles of armor pieces. So you'll unlock like a better uh, chest plate or a different helmet with more like uh, decorations on it. You'll get a backpack that has you know, Oaths of Moment on it, or, um, you know, Purity Seals, and it, and it gives you that ability to customize, and it just feels like every time you play an operation, you're making progress. It doesn't feel like a grind. It feels like, that operation was fun. I enjoyed just playing it. Oh, and cool, I got something new to use and to unlock. So, I feel like that progression is really perfect. Um, the customization in it is cool, especially if you love 40k. I think in general, if you like any court kind of like sci-fi fantasy setting i think you'll probably vibe with with the aesthetic here even if it's not your your whole jam um here is i i think this is where i get kind of insta down in this operation turn around and have a lot of these floating mines behind me and i just get absolutely one shot here oh this was brutal i didn't understand it all i'm like what <laughs> um that's that stuff can happen uh and i don't think i was the one carrying the gene seed luckily in this mission anyway getting distracted um but yeah so the to go along with that is the heraldry customization which is basically the colors for the different chapters and stuff you unlock so i for instance unlocked the blood angels so i got the the icon for my shoulder and the color schemes for that you have to pay for your heraldry customization with the same currency that you need to unlock weapon variants which is the only part of the game that really irritates me right now because it's stingy enough with that currency that you always need that currency to unlock perks and to unlock weapons. And so I don't really have extra currency to unlock additional armor uh, decoration stuff, right? If I buy, if I spend 30 uh, credits or 40 credits on a new, you know, primary armor color or a new, like the Space Wolves, if I wanted the Space Wolves... Uh, 
heraldry, like their icon, all their colors. That's like probably 120, 130 of the currency that you need. But if I unlock a new version of the Thunder Hammer, right, then it's 60 points to unlock that hammer, or when you get to the higher levels, it's like even up to 75, 80, 90 so points so of that currency to unlock those. And to keep the progression on the weapons going, uh, I'm spending all my currency on that, so I would love to, even though I'm a Blood Angels guy, I would love to have like a Space Wolves uh, color scheme to swap to, um, but I don't want to give up three or four operations worth of currency and weapon unlocks to buy that. So that's the only part that really kind of irritates me right now, but the customization itself is super cool. Um, I love all of that. So. So yeah, that's kind of all the pieces around it, the customization, the stuff that keeps you going, the gameplay loop that really gets you into it. So let's talk about kind of the gameplay itself, which honestly it's been a struggle not just talking about that while it's going on in the background, because that's the most satisfying part of it. The gameplay loop in this game is so polished and tight that um, you just, as you pick up the nuances at it, of it and get better at it, it just feels so fluid and awesome. You'll be in the middle of a group of guys and you'll just have just slaughtering one after the other two and dodges and counters and and gun strikes and everything and using your special ability, like on the assault class, right? It's my jump pack ability. And then you'll get these executions and it's just so unbelievably satisfying that I, the way I like to describe it is it's, it feels almost like playing DDR, right? Where you've got these patterns and these rhythms of battle that you get into, doing counters, you know, doing dodges, doing executions, maintaining your armor, and it feels like murder DDR, murder DDR, murder DDR, and it's it's just so much fun learning that and getting learning each enemy's type. So if you're fighting like a Chaos Marine, like you are here. Their attack patterns are different, especially if they're a flame unit versus just like a ranged unit. Um, they have like the extremist level enemies where the terminators come in and they'll fire rockets at you. So learning those attack patterns for the stronger enemies, or really all of the enemies, um, is absolutely critical for getting better at the game. And honestly, that's the biggest learning curve is how you approach each enemy based on how you are using each class, right? So how I'll approach a Chaos Marine or a Tyranid Warrior with Assault with a Chain Sword is also different from how I'll approach it with Assault with a Hammer. And how I'll approach it with a Sniper with a Laz Fusil is different versus how I'll approach it if I need to get into some melee to get an execution with my Combat Knife. Like, there's just so many different aspects of learning here, right? So you got a couple of Chaos Marines here, right? using my special to kind of try and drive them down because it's got a little bit of area effect as well. So I know that when two decently high level enemies show up close together, using that special helps bring them both weak a little bit. Um, and then I can move in and help finish them off with my melee, but also not getting trapped in melee combat, right? Even though I'm a melee focused uh, character class with assault, if you just stand in a group of 15 guys, and swing your hammer around and around. You, you'll survive for a decent amount of time, but they will eventually overwhelm you and take you down. And so as you get better, you learn how to jump into those big group of guys, get a handful of kills, dodge back out, do a counter or a gun strike to replenish some of your armor. And that dance of the game is so addictive. I just, I've played for hours and hours already and I just don't get tired of it. Um, I love it so much. Matter of fact, I've loved it so much if you guys have been watching my channel anytime recently, I've been playing a lot of Modern Warfare 3, doing the weekly challenges. It's kept, It's been a good kind of treadmill in Modern Warfare 3 of having unlocks every week to do and those daily challenges and just come back a little bit every day and feel like I'm making progress. Since Space Marine 2 came out, I have not touched Modern Warfare 3. And I love Modern Warfare 3, but Space Marine 2 is so good. Um, I've also been, uh, as kind of like my downtime game time when I'm playing like a chill single player game, I've been playing some Baldur's Gate 3, finally, um, which I also love, but yeah, that's where my gaming time has been going, is a shit ton of Space Marine 2 and, uh, and some Baldur's Gate 3 and just loving every moment of it, but yeah, look, because I'm 
I mean, even now, watching this game play back, this was, I probably recorded this about a week ago. Um, I didn't really even realize it until I unlocked a perk that gives a bonus for it, but with the Assault Class's Jump Pack ability, when you hit Y on, on Xbox, whatever it is, Triangle on PlayStation, when you activate that ability and you fly up in the air, you can slam back down immediately, which is pretty much what I was doing here. But it turns out that if you hold that down and hover for those couple of seconds, that's actually charging that ability. And so now, when I do that jump pack ability now, I pause for that extra one and a half, two seconds it takes to charge up before I, uh, before I do the slam. Um, because I think I also, like I said, unlocked a perk for the Assault class that makes that more powerful when it's fully charged. So, yeah, it's just, it's just so much fun learning and improving and doing that. Um, the, I think I've only done one or two attempts at the, um, Ruthless difficulty level, and the most recent one that I did, the reason even that I failed, I, I feel like I've got my class, like when I'm assault, I've got most of the basics down, like I'm, I've got, I'm, I can come up pretty confidently against any major level enemy, right, like I know how to handle the marines and the warriors, and you know, I know when to dodge and parry and when not to get trapped in big groups. But it does at those higher difficulty levels definitely depend a lot more on your teammates. I haven't really dug into that a lot, but playing co-op with randoms is a ton of fun. If you're in a difficulty that's not really pushing your limits, it's it's pretty fun regardless of kind of skill level because you can pretty much, you know, as you feel comfortable with your counters and your dodges, you can pretty much carry anyone. I, you know, you can kind of solo these um, in general. Um, it's easier to solo these with bots rather than bad players, but you can also, um, you know, quote unquote solo it if your teammates aren't super great, but it helps obviously if they are. So the point of saying that is I enjoy it a lot more playing with real players versus bots. And even if they're not the best players in the world and they're just randoms that aren't super good, it's still a fun experience and I feel like they don't completely, uh, you know, they, they don't spoil the experience. And quite the opposite, when you get in a group with two other good players and you stick together for three or four games, it is a ton of fun just absolutely decimating enemies. You got that good class composition, you got like a heavy and a, an assault and a tactical, like doing the aspect scan. And you, if you really find a couple of good players, it can be a ton of fun just, just synergizing and playing a bunch of those. So, so yeah, it's... It just it's just so much fun from all that you know getting those difficulty levels is more about understanding and getting better with your class the weapons the parries the dodges the perks and the upgraded weapons definitely do help but they aren't really the key component of driving your success at those higher levels uh, it's really more about getting consistent at parries and counters and dodges and knowing when to use your ranged weapons versus your close weapons. Um, so it's just absolutely a ton of fun. As you can tell, I went through this entire gameplay and have been talking just non-stop about how much I love it. So if you're at all on the fence about Space Marine 2, don't be. You will not regret it. This feels very much to me like Helldivers 2, where it just... I was definitely looking on it. It was on looking at it. It was on my radar because I'm a huge 40k fan, and I have been since I was in junior high, right? <laughs> um, second edition uh, Warhammer 40k tabletop. I had I had my Blood Angels army, um, and we're in 10th edition now. But even if you're not a 40k fanatic like I am, this this is a game that kind of came out of nowhere, like Hell Divers 2 did, right? Where it was just such a solid, awesome gameplay loop for a co-op shooter. And Space Marine 2 feels very much like that. They are very similar in the way that they are co-op based operations shooters, although very different in that Helldivers 2 focuses more on stratagems. Um, and this is more on the kind of DDR combat, like I said. Um, so I still enjoy both, but for me, I think the Space Marine 2 gameplay is more gratifying. But the point of bringing that up is, is to tell you that if you're thinking about this game it is that level of awesome and addictive where it's just 
gonna get you hooked. You're gonna keep playing it. Because it's been so popular, there's gonna be DLC for it. I've seen that the developers have said that they're gonna uh, add new operations, new enemy types. Um, so there's definitely a good future for this game. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm going to keep playing the shit out of it for sure. I think I even heard that they're going to be adding a new class, even though originally they were like, eh, we may or may not do that. But So I'm not entirely certain what's coming from, from the roadmap, but there is a roadmap. It's going to be awesome. If you guys are unsure about it, don't be unsure. Pick it up. You won't regret it. Hopefully you guys don't regret watching this video. If you do regret it, you can leave me a dislike. But if you don't regret it and you enjoyed this video, leave me a like. If you want to hear more from me, consider subscribing and sticking around for all the other stuff I'll do. Right, I'm going to have to go back and play more Space Marines, you guys. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. I'll see you in the next one.